Juneteenth, written by Vonda Michelle Nelson and Drew Nelson, illustrated by Mark Schroeder. Jubilee. It is June 19th, 1865, a hot day in Texas. Clouds decorate the bright blue sky. On a farm outside the city of Galveston, a man hoes corn. Five miles away, a teenage boy chops wood. Nearby, a woman scrubs the floor. Her sister milks a cow in the barn. It seems like a normal day. Then a message arrives in Galveston. It races from ear to ear through town. The message is carried to the countryside by riders on horseback. It is carried by wagon and by people on foot. The people on foot are running because the message is so important. When the news reaches the man in the cornfield, tears roll down his cheeks. Five miles away, the young woodcutter plants his ax in a stump and runs to hug his father. Nearby, the woman stops scrubbing and dances across the wet floor. Her sister drops a bucket of milk and falls to her knees. As the news spreads across Texas, people stop working and jump for joy. These men, women, and children were not ordinary workers. They were enslaved black people. The news that arrived on June 19th changed their lives forever. On that day, General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston. He read an order from President Abraham Lincoln. The order said enslaved people were free. This was good news, but it was old news. President Lincoln had given the order in 1863, but enslaved people in some places were not told right away. It took more than two years for the order to reach those in Texas. When it finally did, the streets of Galveston rang with black voices shouting, we're free, free, free. Freedom. On January 1st, 1863, President Lincoln signed a special order called the Emancipation Proclamation. It said that all persons held as slaves in the Confederate States were forever free. Many plantation owners kept President Lincoln's order secret. Even when the owners knew the South would lose the war, they wanted one more free harvest. But Union soldiers brought the news as the troops moved through the South. Enslaved people spread the word to others. Thousands of newly freed blacks joined the Union Army to help win the war. Some who were enslaved in Texas heard tales about freedom, but they couldn't be sure those stories were true. They had to be careful. If they even talked about freedom, they could be punished. If they tried to leave the plantations, they might be whipped or much worse. All they could do was wait and hope. Finally, in April 1865, the Union won the Civil War. More than 700,000 people from the North and the South died fighting in the war. On June 19th, Union General Granger brought the news of freedom to Galveston. Texas was the last state where the official announcement was made. No more slavery chains. Not everyone believed the announcement. More than 200 years had passed since Africans were first captured and brought to North America. By 1865, most enslaved blacks in North America had been born here. The only life they knew was slavery. Then, in an instant, they were free. Once they knew the truth, they stopped working. The moment was scary and wonderful. They were free. They laughed and cried, shouted and prayed. They danced and sang, gathered and hugged. They imagined their lives as free Americans. Some freed blacks left the plantation with just the clothes on their backs. They didn't know where they were going. They were happy just to be free to go anywhere. Many searched for loved ones who'd been sold to other plantations. Some were reunited with their families. Others never found their parents or children. Some found jobs in cities. Others could not because white people wouldn't hire them. Many stayed on plantations because they had nowhere else to go. 
They were free, but black Americans would struggle for equal rights for a long time. Still, the end of slavery brought great joy and a reason to celebrate. Juneteenth. On June 19th, 1866, one year after they had learned of their freedom, freed African Americans came together to celebrate. The city of Galveston was alive with music. The sweet, smoky smell of barbecue filled the air. Black Texans were wearing their Sunday best. They gathered and hugged. They shared news and told stories. They sang spirituals celebrating freedom. No more slavery chains for me. No more, no more. Folks attended ceremonies, worship services, and parades to mark the day. This was the first of many June 19th celebrations in Texas. And when black Texans moved to other states, they took the tradition with them. But how did June 19th become Juneteenth? At first, Texans called it Freedom Day, Emancipation Day, Jubilee, or simply June 19th. As years passed and freedom stories were told and retold, June and 19th blended together into Juneteenth. Today, Juneteenth is celebrated much like that first anniversary in 1866. People of all colors arrive at parks, churches, schools, and backyards for picnics. The sweet, smoky smell of barbecue fills the air. Potato salad, corn on the cob, biscuits, homemade ice cream, cakes, pies, and melons crowd the table. Red velvet cake and red soda pop are traditional treats. Red honors all the people whose blood was shed in slavery and in the struggle for freedom. Festive parades fill city streets with music and dancing. Black cowboys and cowgirls clop through town on horses. Miss Juneteenth waves from a decorated float. Folks stroll along, singing songs of freedom and patriotism. Spirited baseball games bring whoops and hollers from excited fans. Foot races, sack races, and rodeos spark cheers and laughter. At the cakewalk, people clap their hands and tap their feet. Dancers turn and leap, strut and quick step to win the grand prize, a delicious cake. Worship services and readings of the Emancipation Proclamation are important parts of Juneteenth. Speakers tell and retell stories of slavery and freedom. They share tales of why enslaved Texans were the last to get the news. One legend says that the first messenger sent with the proclamation was murdered along the way. Another story says he was given a very, very slow mule to ride. People laugh, but no one forgets the real reason for the late news. No one forgets that Juneteenth is not just a day to have fun. It is a time to remember. Juneteenth is celebrated in big or small ways almost everywhere in the United States. The government of Texas made it a state holiday on January 1st, 1980. From Florida to Alaska, California to New Jersey, other states across the nation have followed this example. Many people believe that June 19th should be a national holiday, and thankfully, now it is. Like Thanksgiving or the 4th of July. Wherever it is celebrated, Juneteenth is a time to sing praises for the end of slavery in the United States.